Now, on October 31st, we farewelled our campus pastor, Ryan Haynes, and I remember that day because we had not yet uh, found, and the Lord hadn't opened that door yet for our next campus pastor, but we met a gentleman that afternoon, and by met, I mean over Google Hangouts through a screen, and uh, about 60 seconds into that interview, I said, yep, that's, that's our next campus pastor. I didn't say that out loud because we were still on the screen, but I... I he just had that peace. And so I had the pleasure of introducing uh, to our campus community this morning uh, our new William Jessup University campus pastor, uh, Thomas Fitzpatrick. So can you welcome Thomas with me to the stage? Warriors, what's up? Uh, it is so good to be with you guys this morning. Man, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, as Dave mentioned, my name is Thomas Fitzpatrick. Uh, my family calls me Tom. My friends call me T-Fizzy. And uh, my wife calls me, well, that's none of your business. Um, but it is an honor to be your next campus pastor and to get to share a few words with you this morning as you wrap up the semester. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna get to know you just a little bit better. I know we don't have a ton of time. And so uh, I spent some time in SoCal, about seven or eight years doing ministry down there. So I'm not as familiar with the North. So I'm gonna put some uh, pictures up on the screen about like a show of hands, probably because of the lights and more like a whoop whoop. I want you to tell me what you resonate with more. Okay, what you like better? Are we cool with that? All right, so let's put some pictures up on the screen. So we got snowboarding or surfing. Snowboarders, woo woo! All right, and any, any surfers? Okay, okay, all right, let's go to the next picture here. Uh, how about this one? This is an important picture to understand. How about dog people? Woo woo! All right, anybody like the spawn of Satan? Cats? What? What? Oh, I don't know about that. You don't get chapel credit this morning if you said whoop whoop to the cat, sorry. All right, how about the next picture here? This might be more for the ladies. Uh, Ryan, are we Ryan fans? Or Mark? Wow, okay, Ryan it is, Ryan it is, all right. And maybe the most important one, I gotta know real fast, next slide is this one. Um, Apple? And, and we'll just pray for the rest of you. I'm not, I'm not even gonna ask, I'm not even gonna ask. All right, now I know you perfectly, we can move on, that's great, thank you so much. Hey, uh, several years ago, I heard a word from this like new age monastic preacher from Abilene, Texas, of all places. He was a dude, he only wore black, he has less hair than I do, but he had this word, and, and it literally changed the trajectory of my life. And, and I, I wanna share with you this morning quickly in the hope that it'll, it'll maybe do the same thing. Uh, the word is found in 2 Corinthians 1, verses 18 through 20. Let me read it for you. As surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, it was not yes and no. No, in him it's, it's always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And every generation has its own unique set of slang terms, doesn't it? Different expressions, all the cool kids say. So in the, in the 60s and 70s, you'd probably say things like boogie down or cherry, funky, psych, like dynamite. We should bring that one back. Uh, in the 80s or 90s, you said, dude, right? You said gnarly, diss, and you didn't say hi. You said, sup, sup. And then a few years ago, you might hear someone say like, uh, you know, whatever, you awkward hipster, right? That might be something, something you'd hear. So this morning, I want to share with you a few words that I heard at Pepperdine where I used to do ministry and, and words I think that are probably pretty common here at Jessup as well. All right, the first word is actually in the middle of a huge identity crisis, and that word is literally. Who literally says that word all of the time? Anyone? Okay, be honest. Be honest with yourself. I mean, everything right now has to be intensified. It doesn't have to be exaggerated in some way. And so we use and abuse that word constantly. Uh, Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec, he's probably the one we should blame for this, right? Like, literally, he says. Here's the problem, though. You're not literally going to explode if you see Khalid perform live. I promise you, okay? Uh, you're not literally going to die waiting for the new season of Stranger Things to come out. Right? You're just not. Uh, you didn't literally just run here from Sacramento. You, you might have exceeded the speed limit, but you didn't run here, okay? 
A student told me one time she literally bent over backwards to help her roommate out. I said, well, how, how did that help her? It seems kind of weird. It's like, oh, no, 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 I didn't really do that. I just literally did that. Okay, sure. We have butchered this word so badly, Jesso, that Webster's Dictionary just last year, I kid you not, changed the definition. So literally also means figuratively now. So do you mean that literally or literally? Yes. The second word I want to bring to your attention this morning is, uh, it's not necessarily unique to this generation, but I just think we use it a lot more in the current generation. And that word is maybe. Are you attending this event as seen on Facebook or maybe through a Google invite? What are your, what are your choices? Yes, no, maybe, maybe. Think about this word. When, when you tell me maybe, when you answer my question with the maybe, what do I know now that I didn't know before I asked you the question? Nothing. Let me give you an example. Guy asks girl, would you like to go see a movie with me sometime? Girl says, maybe. Guy's thinking, is that a no? A heck no? A not even if we were in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and we were the only two humans alive, no? Or is that a yes? Heck yes. In fact, I can hear wedding bells ring in the distance and see pictures of our future family in front of the Christmas tree. <laughs> like, like, woman, what are you trying to tell me? Yes, no, maybe, I, I don't know what you're saying right now. I had a student tell me just the other day when asked if they were going to attend an event, they said, that's a definite maybe, and they walked away. <laughs> I have no clue what you just said. All right, the third term we use a lot right now, it isn't actually a word as much as it is something that we do to words. We use the word literally because we literally have no idea what it means. We use the word maybe because we've got some commitment issues. And we do this because we're just, we're just lazy. And that is cut words in half or only say part of a word. You with me? Let me give you a couple of great examples. Def, perf, obvi, probs, merch, cray cray. All right, the cray cray one is funny to me because crazy is two syllables. So you're not actually saving yourself any, any, anyway, it doesn't matter. I heard a kid just the other day say to his friends, hey, you guys wanna go with me to get some chick nugs at McD's? Chick nugs at McD's. It's as if the evolutionary process is now reversing itself. It's like, <laughs> soon we'll be like, rah, 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 rah. but there is a word. There is a word that will never go out of style, Jessup. There is a word that will always change people's life. You know what that word is? Yes. The word is yes. Well, Jesus is a close second. You, you, get, you get some points for that. Partial credit, partial credit for this girl. But think about the power of the word yes. Did you get into Jessup? Yes. Are you literally going to be paying off student loans the rest of your adult life? Yes. Probs, probs, yeah. Will you marry me, Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Bikini? What's the answer? Yeah, okay, no, it wasn't maybe. It wasn't a maybe. Yes. Is the new baby girl healthy? Yes, most deaf, she's perf. I mean, I love the word yes. I, mean, I think that God loves this word as well. See, God doesn't say things to us like literally because he needs to exaggerate or make a point. He doesn't say things like maybe because he's keeping his options open. He doesn't shorten words because he's lazy or trying to be cool. He says one word to us, and that word is yes. Yes. His word to us, Jessup, is always and forever yes. That's what Paul is saying in this text in 2 Corinthians. Every promise that God has made, all 6,000 on some accounts, is yes to you. And that's true. All of those yeses are true for you because of Jesus Christ. Now you see, friends, Christmas is a really, really big deal. Not just because of the decorations and the songs and the goosebumps we get when we listen to songs like we just had and, and, and the gifts and the smells and all that. Those are things I love and appreciate. But Christmas is a really big deal because of Jesus. Because Jesus is God's yes. And because of Jesus, all of God's other promises are all yes. Are you with me? At Christmas, God says yes to you. That's what Christmas is. It's the beginning of an eternal forever and always yes to you. 
Jesus, when he came, changed everything. It wasn't a literally, it wasn't a maybe, it wasn't a perf, it was a yes forever. Think about the questions that dominate our lives, guys. The questions that we ask late at night when we can't think about anything else, right? Questions that we, that we wrestle with deep in our hearts. Am I more than just accidental pond scum? Am I more than just a highly developed monkey? Yes. The answer to all those questions is yes in Jesus Christ. Is there anyone out there who sees me? And anyone who knows me, anyone who cares about me, Yes, the answer to all of those questions is yes in Jesus Christ. Will I ever be able to overcome my shameful past, the things that I have done to others or that others have done to me? Yes, the answer to all of those questions is yes in Jesus Christ. Is there anything more to this life than the three counterfeit gods of our days, uh, sex, stuff, and success? Is there anything more to this life than those three things? Yes, The answer to those questions is yes in Jesus Christ. God, can you actually satisfy the deepest desires of my heart? God, can you truly work out all things for my good? Is that true? Is that real? Do you care? Do you see me? Do you know me? Yes. The answer to those questions is yes in Jesus Christ. See, this little guy right here in the manger, he's more than just a little baby. So much more. This is God's yes to you. This is God's yes to the world. See, if all roads lead to God, if heaven and hell aren't real places, if God doesn't literally love you, literally and literally love you, with his entire being, he does not send Jesus to us. It's cray-cray. I know, it's cray-cray. Let me say it a different way. This is a picture right here of, of my sweet girls. Um, I'm so excited for you to get to meet them here in a couple of weeks. I miss them. haven't seen them for a little while. Uh, I love them so much. They are my world, friends. They are my life. And I, and I like you guys. I like you guys a lot. What I've seen in the last five days has been awesome. Don't get me wrong. But I would never give them up for you. I would never separate myself from my girls for your sake or for your good. See, my love, it has limits. I wouldn't say yes to you if it meant sending them away or sacrificing them for you. I would never do that. But that's not, that's not the case with God. That's not true for God. God is so committed to us that he gives up his son for us and gifts him to us. Are you with me? He's so committed to us that he will gift and give away his son for us. Maybe you've never heard a word from the Lord before. Maybe you think his voice is distant or undetectable to you. Maybe you assume that what God would say to you is the same thing like your deadbeat dad said to you back in the day or some loser boyfriend back in high school. Maybe the only words you've ever heard or think you would only hear from God are like, not good enough, try harder, failure, eh, no, whatever. Well, this morning, Jessup, as we end the semester, as you move into the Christmas season, I want you to hear something. I want you to hear something. And not just hear it with your ears. I want you to believe it in the depths of your being. God's word to you is yes. And it will always and forever be yes because of Jesus. You get to go home in a few days for Christmas break. Can I get an, like an amen to that? When you go home, you're going to hear a lot of things. Christmas carols, jingle bells, presents being ripped open, your mama yelling at you to do the laundry, whatever, I don't know. You're going to hear a lot of things. I want you to hear one thing. I want you to look at that manger. Spend some time this break looking at that manger and hearing God's yes. Because that's what that is. That is God's yes to you. Let me pray for you and we'll get you out of here. God, to say that you are a great God is the biggest understatement this world has ever heard. There is no God like you in heaven above or earth below. And we are humbled and thrilled and so honored to be called your sons and daughters. We thank you from the very bottom of our heart for Jesus Christ because we know that we can now live with this hope now in this moment as well as for all of eternity that you will always and forever say yes to us. All of your promises are yes. Every word you'd ever say to us is yes because of Jesus. 
and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. So great to be with you, Jessup. God bless you guys. Have an amazing break.